Hello and welcome to Real Hi-Fi Hell, the next level speaker super tweak. So let's talk about um, speakers that you might be uh, thinking of getting for yourself so you can tweak them. I have a lot of you know information to, to cover here and um, instead of you just going fast through the video, I suggest that you actually listen to every single second of this video because it, it will help make things more uh, put things more into perspective and also generally with, with all of my videos try and watch them all they might not be there tomorrow because you never know um, so get that information while it's still um, available you can't assume that it's always going to be there um, and it just helps understand my videos more if you can just go from start to end without just uh, just reading the text because many times I don't just read the text sometimes I also just you know improvise a bit so you'll be losing out on a lot of information if you don't um, just take everything into consideration what I'm saying here so yeah there are some few really good speakers out there with a huge um, huge untapped potential um, that's pretty much up there close to the top top class um, but just need that you know that last bit of push to sound uh, extremely good um, and I would suggest that you only do this if you know 100% what you're doing um, it's better to to just give your speaker over to a professional they could have an audio repair shop it could be some kind of a, a shop that perhaps doesn't do uh, repair or upgrades you'll kind of have to ask around figure out what the price is going to be there might sometimes be some surprises so that they might give you a price and it ends up being a bit more expensive or sometimes you, it, it, it actually gets a tiny bit cheaper um, to just be aware of that I, I've gotten into situations uh, like that so it isn't as uh, easy as as you might think to start with but um watching this video will definitely make it a hell of a lot more uh, interesting owning a certain type of speaker um, and just know that once you start doing tweaks generally not just on speakers but like with all here even though you might improve the sound by let's just say five ten times the amount of what you originally started with um, it's a funny thing, but uh, the used market, you know, people in general don't really seem to understand that. So you might not get your money back that you've invested in the speaker. It might even make the speaker um, become less worth of what it was before. So you have to take that into consideration. Um, when people upgrade stuff, there are levels of, of upgrading stuff, how you solve problems. And a lot of people that upgrade stuff don't do a proper job. And I think it's mostly because of that, that people don't necessarily uh, know if it's good, even though it's uh, upgraded. So upgraded doesn't always mean <laughs> the sound is better, but it could potentially get a hell of a lot better. So um, yeah, hopefully that will help um, with you watching this uh, this video so um, let's get into it we've got the Verity Rienzi speaker I would say that this is one of their first models where you know Verity started really getting into the game uh, making good sound one of the very first speakers they don't make them anymore very small speaker meant for small rooms and um, what I would do here with this type of speaker is what I call a level one tweak. Um, let me just, wait one moment. <laughs> okay. So this could be either a, a Rienzi or a Fidelio uh, version. So Rienzi is the very smallest version. Fidelio is like, you know, a, a bit better later model so if let's just say that this was the fidelio uh, model which i actually own 
what I would do is uh, this here. Um, and that is that you just change the capacitor and the uh, cable on the middle range itself. So you take this thing out and there's some cable. I haven't done the job myself, but my friend did it for me once many years ago. And I can't say what capacitor I used or um, what cable he used, but um, just know that with this particular model, he didn't have to use a lot of money finding a capacitor that was uh, better. I think it only cost like 20, 30 bucks to get something that was better. <clears throat> So you have to know what you're doing. You have to know about values and, and the sound of that component. And uh, it could be that you have to change um, through a lot of different capacitors to find out okay, which one sounds best. But um, that combined with putting a better cable in it can really free up the sound and make it a lot more evolved and making it sound like one of the bigger models. So what you really can, what I would suggest that you do is that you don't spare, um, you don't save on the money in this case here, because if you're just changing the, uh, the middle range, if you put some kind of a horrible screechy, you know, very clear sounding cheap silver cable or even copper cable it can get out of balance so that you hear that there are two different types of cables in the speaker so the best cable that i know of that can um, that you know that can really deliver on all parts of the sound and especially in regards to stability naturality integration which is like the most important part of the sound we all want a bit of that this and that type of detail but especially when you're dealing with middle range which is like the biggest part of the sound that you're listening to from a speaker we want a really really good cable so uh, definitely not hardware store cables, definitely not those budget cables that you get in a, in a hi-fi store. Verity has already put some very decent cable in it. I can't remember um, what it is they use. I think they use some in-house stuff. Um, and it's, and it's, you know, it's, it's pretty up there. It's not the, the normal cable that you get in a, in a normal speaker. So you kind of need something like this. Um, and I would suggest a, a, a double pull. Um, so because it's a small speaker, you don't have to use a hell of a lot of, of, um, of wire, but you know, have the guy in the store figure out okay, how much length do you need? And then, you know, get a double pull on it. You know, um, I don't know. I think I'm, I'm just guessing, I'm guessing that there are two connectors on one unit. So that would mean that you have two cables normally, but this cable that I'm talking about is, um, <laughs> sorry, this cable that I'm talking about is uh, very thin. You know, so you kind of need a, a, a double pull for it to really do its job or else it just gets too polite and too weak in sound. So these are just some of the, the ones that I think are like, you know, this is basically the end destination of, of cable in regards to upgrading a, a speaker, assuming that you have a decent speaker. So... <clears throat> And, you know, I've, I've written some other stuff here that I'm not going to read up. You, you guys can just, you know, um, look at that later. I don't want to make this video too long or else people are not going to click on it. Uh, yeah, you know how that type of thing works. But um, specifics are here. So we'll just read those up. Let me get on uh, with the next one here. So we're going up in models here. You can see the cabinet gets bigger. It's a deeper cabinet overall, bigger units. 
And yeah, when we're getting into Verity Parsifal Encore, we have um, not just terminals here, but also up here, actually with a connector upstairs, up, up here. Um, so just know that that is a speaker that you really can potentially harvest a, a lot from. I haven't yet done this, but I know that from a friend having told me so. And he knows his, uh, his shit. So, um, it is a wolf in sheep's clothing, you know. Verity Parsifal is a much, much, much better speaker than it seems to be when you first try it. And as it is, you can also just use the speaker as it is. And um, then you'll get a sound that perhaps is a bit more on the traditional reserved type of sound getting a taste of this this verity world of sound which isn't like oh my god crazy like the verity sarastro but getting close to that you know get getting reasonably close to that so what i would suggest when you have a speaker like this which, which is like th this is a different class of speaker you know i wish i had this but sadly i i just wasn't that fortunate so if I had this, I would do a level one, which I call mid-range cable and capacitor check. Or you could also go with a level 1.5 upgrade, which is capacitor and then all the cable, you know, not just the middle range, but treble middle range unit at the back. And if you want to go completely nuts, you know, you might have found this uh, cheap on the used market lucky you <laughs> and uh, yeah if you're one of those lucky people uh, you could in theory change the capacitor the uh, the the cable all over the place and then you could do something uh, you know crazy like um, taking the audio note on Gaku terminals which are basically the best silver terminals on planet earth um, you could also, in theory, just use the uh, Audio Note uh, Maishu, which are probably the second best ones. Uh, and then perhaps, I don't know, Uzu, and then VBT Silver, probably like third, fourth, something like that. Um, you could do that. You know, I'm, j I'm just saying it's a possibility. Would I do it? Hmm. Not really sure. Um, it's a bit of a gamble. It's a bit of a gamble, but... Let's just say that I owned this speaker for 10, 15 years and I was getting a bit tired of it. And I wanted to like see hmm, how much could I press this speaker uh, to 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 really perform, really perform, you know, become a lot more fine and detail, a lot more free, even more natural and, and deep, you know, just get a lot more that Verity Sarastro sound. If I want to turn this into just, you know, very, very close to that Verity Sarastro sound, potentially more natural, more integrated. Huh? Of course, do you might want to do something like this. You know, go all the way. Uh, do 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 it if you want to. I don't know how it's gonna look at the back with the terminals. You know that that could be a bit tricky. Um, it might take a lot of time for the technician to do, and that's a lot of cable, you know, and you really want to double pull on those uh, cables uh, for it to really do, uh, you know, uh, have a proper powerful sound. So I'm just saying that's a possibility. Those are, These are one of the few speakers on the market that just have that potential. Of, of really folding out itself and, and just getting on to a, a crazy, crazy good level. So I'm saying that's there for you to find out if you want to. Now, when we're getting into, uh, you know, the Verity Lenore type of speaker, I mean, you could in theory do this, um, but I, you know, personally, I wouldn't do it. You know, I think it's already fine, majestic and balanced and sound. And you can't really make it much more powerful, which you really want from the speaker. You could make it more fine, a bit more natural, a bit better integration, a bit more beautiful. You could, but, 
yeah, I mean, you could in theory just change the, the Ongako terminals or you could do it all the way with the, um, the SPE uh, silver uh, cable with a double pull. You could do that in theory. Um, so, I mean, personally, I would just leave this speaker alone. You know, I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't chance it. You know, I feel that's a bit like, uh, you know, don't don't do that. Don't do that. You can probably get away with that. But then if you get away with that, then you're just really good, you know, <laughs> and, and I don't expect a lot of people to to be that good. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's just my opinion. And, and the rest here is just like a, a hunch that I have, what I feel could possibly do a nice upgrade. So <clears throat> I feel that with some kind of rare model from Fokel, Sonos Vapor, maybe Rockport in the mid to high level, they're just changing the cables at the inside on all units to a, a much higher class of cable um, could do something, you know, could 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 make the sound a lot more natural fine and and almost like 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 make it care a bit more you know I, fi I find that with a lot of these types of speakers that they have this sort of nice reserved not really releasing the sound not necessarily fully caring type of sound you know where it's just i don't know um that's just me but but i feel that a, a lot of gear has that and i just have a hunch i haven't tried this but i have a hunch that you could make them more fine more detailed uh, less numb um so you get a lot more of that in between type of detail kind of connecting the dots in a more natural beautiful uh sensical um sensical no nah. Uh, kind of way where just stuff makes more sense and you could also take all the lower models from like peak consult speakers and uh, do some cable upgrades speaker terminal upgrades capacitor upgrades i mean if you dare um yeah and i feel that with a lot of their models there's definitely something there that could be unleashed more that is you know holding it a bit back and um <clears throat> yeah you know we're, we're dealing with gear that's so expensive so most of the times you you can really do it on a, on really expensive gear so <clears throat> i just feel that with many speakers in this range that are five hundred dollars to ten thousand dollars that they're just so simple uh you know the build quality that they're just not worth it you know because they're they're, they're deliberately made in a way so everything kind of compensates you know and complements each other on their weaknesses so i feel that with a lot of those speakers i wouldn't personally do any tweaks and you know there is this i've noticed recently that we're finally starting to make some okay book standing speakers you know some some speakers a bit like the uh, the gamut or the uh, the top, I think they have some kind of a Dune Audio top uh, model. They're also with a very deep cabinet. And then, you know, Martin Design, I saw this Pursuit Perfect System video with Martin Design, uh, Parker, Oscar, I can't remember what it was called, that, that speaker there. But it also looked like, you know, they're finally getting... In, into a proper book standing speaker sound where they have a proper deep cabinet instead of these flat cabinets with only two units uh, you know at the front you know we, we're getting you know deeper cabinets and we're getting a, a unit on the back and we're kind of learning you know i felt that for many many years book standing speakers were just horrible absolutely horrible not giving you enough bass and lacking in so many areas but we're kind of getting there now so you might not want to do these types of upgrades you might just want to buy one of those new book standing speakers and and you know i got a good impression of that guy from uh, pursuit perfect system 
with the uh, Martin Design book standing speakers that yeah the, the, there seems to be a, a, a good sound there well above average and I feel that when, when you're getting into these average book standing speakers you know that there's just so little to worth work with so you definitely don't want to upgrade most of them and if there are some models that you do want to upgrade it's usually these types of models you know like this gamut speaker where the cable inside aren't the best the um, the terminals at the back aren't the best but if you probably find some cables like Cardas and some you know some Cardas terminals you could make this a lot more solid and creamy and nice and sound but forget about putting you know <laughs> audio note components on stuff like this you know it most likely will not be good enough to to tame that so those are just my considerations i might be wrong if you somehow get away with doing that then it's just like you know then i take my hat off for you you know then you've done something that most people are not able to do but that's just my uh, advice in general i wouldn't take an old cheap bmw or normal june audio or normal whatever brand uh, that costs only a couple of thousand bucks and then try to you know upgrade some of the components i mean those speakers are usually locked in sound and and if you try to challenge them they will bite your head off you know it will kind of it will start a chain reaction of bad stuff happening where it reveals detail that it's not supposed to reveal you know so um that that's just my advice take it or leave it, it it's up to you um and and yeah that, that that's kind of what i have to 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 say about these things you know you you could get away with some of these lower end uh, perhaps five to ten thousand dollars speakers it's very risky you know i've seen some people do this where they just didn't get away with it or they got away with it but you know it just gave um it revealed detail that it wasn't really supposed to you know it just revealed too much so you gotta watch out with that you know you gotta watch out with that and typically when you're then finally dealing with these types of speakers you want to use stuff like carter or food type of components on, on doing that to perhaps make it a bit more stable but yeah, we're into that territory of everything can happen so i don't want to really promote that world where you try and do stuff like that but i've noticed that at least with smaller models of avalon speakers that they could definitely use some better cables in them and some better plugs crossover you gotta watch out when you've got ceramic driver speakers doing upgrades in the crossover i usually only recommend repairing stuff there because when you're dealing with ceramic driver uh, uh, units they're very very complex and it takes a very long time to tune those speakers in that's my chair by the way sorry um so you gotta you gotta be a bit careful with that but i've noticed with especially some of the older lower models of avalon speakers my god were they just using really bad cables really bad plugs i can imagine that now they're probably into a, a much higher quality of cables and plugs but yeah just just be aware of that you know you might have a very cheap old avalon lower model it could easily get better just uh, that part alone and again i wouldn't be brave on those types of speakers that have this very edgy type of of revealing sound if you start putting you know dual loan strips of of silver on it you're really taking a chance or if you're trying to you know do something similar like that put some nordost uh, valhalla cable or odin cable in it not only is going that going to be very expensive but that you know you're really i mean you're you're really asking for trouble <laughs> when you're putting cables like that in speakers they got away with it in the verity serastro speaker and my god did they do a really good job matching that but 
that's really difficult okay yeah that's really difficult and um you also don't want to put a cable that's too warm and dark like like a fat old Cardas or Fenden Hull uh cable uh in an avalanche because you want something kind of in between those two extremes that's good quality so i'll let you figure that out you know that that that's that's a difficult job to to solve and yeah wilson watts puppies you know i found that a lot of these versions i haven't heard all of them a lot of them had clarity problems and focus problems and 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 true you know just true clarity instead of this hi-fi clarity type of thing that they like to do generally with their speakers but i felt that there was a lot of potential where it could have gotten more precise more of a real type of clarity so i don't know perhaps yorma cables i really have no idea could be fun to to try a couple of different ones just so you don't have to listen to the standard stuff then it that's in it does that mean that they use some really basic crappy cables no they, they usually use some pretty decent cables but um they have a tendency of being a very certain type of personality that i don't like what wilson puts in in their speakers that type of cable so we're talking about cables that are a bit like mit cables and transparent cables where you get certain types of detail that has a certain priority and taste i don't feel that it's really neutral enough for me personally so i feel that it could get a lot better especially you have an old version it's a bit fluffy in the base could use a bit more clarity and crispiness yeah go with something um something very different that that, that could be interesting perhaps I don't know how, how the hell uh, audio note cable, silver cable would sound in this. That could be very interesting to hear. I just have no idea, you know, because Wilson Audio is a very different type of speaker sound. And I also feel that the lower level um, Wilson Audio speakers just generally um, could use good cable. Uh, that That is just very different, you know, like I mentioned here, Yorma, something like that. And, and yeah, you know, something that's more free, natural, li uh, lively, exciting. That That's why I recommend uh, a different cable. Um, and generally, I noticed that these 5 to 35-year-old mid to top models um, could use better cables and, and plugs. And perhaps once in a while, change a component on the crossover to something more evolve fresh and exciting you know like Dulon, Mondorf and audio note where you know clearly audio note is is better but i mean you, you gotta make a <clears throat> there there isn't a, a clear recipe for like here do this on every speaker you know here's the the precise formula but you you kind of recognize you have to recognize what level is the speaker on how old is it what type of sound is it do we want to get deeper in this same type of sound or do we want to kind of try something perhaps a bit more new a bit more brave a bit more interesting that you've perhaps noticed you like um, in, instead of that traditional sound or whatever sound they're trying to go with i feel that it's, it's a very neglected part of a lot of speakers especially from the the old olden days that the cables that they used in a lot of those olden speakers are typically very basic very reserved and just lacking a lot of clarity depth detail just a hell of a lot of stuff and um still sometimes it can be very different what what type of cable that they use so yeah kind of have to go with your gut feeling and 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 try something and uh, it, it takes a while kind of kind of figuring that out um but but generally i would recommend something like um, some good cardas or audio quest cables on the lower end gear 
uh, as an upgrade. Um, and then fine speakers get more something like Yorma, Condo, Audio Note, Silver type of cable. Um, and then maybe even something like uh, Dürholm. That could um, that could also be very interesting. And 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 yeah, you know, the, there are physical uh, restrictions for when you're dealing with cables inside of speakers because they can't be this, you know, this thick speaker cable that you're used to outside. So you also have to fight with that problem, you know, that that's a problem in itself. But I know from, for example, some of the cheaper um, cheaper speakers out there. You could potentially on a lot of cheaper speakers out there just put some audio note lx 96 um cables on them you know to give them more of a creamy natural pleasant type of sound you could do that with a lot of speakers in general um yeah it might be a bit expensive but I think it, it, it could solve a lot of problems. You know, it, 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 if you can't get card as an audio quest, you could definitely go with that cheaper audio note LX96 um, cable inside of a lot of speakers, especially in, inside of a lot of do-it-yourself speakers. I feel that that's one of the few cables where you can get away with a higher class sound and, and have something that it doesn't fill a hell of a lot. But... It's just a very good value solution for a lot of things. So I think that's probably like the, the, the ultimate high end, best value, most safe type of upgraded internal speaker cable. But you know, some speakers, this is gonna be too, too thick so you can't work with it, you know? Um, it could be interesting could be very interesting trying that i have heard that cable on a dtq wt speaker and it definitely removed a lot of that harshness a lot of that um there was some mechanical noise and just it had like a empty raw type of sound with the original cable where this thing just made a lot more sense and then we didn't have to use Cardas, which was more expensive, or AudioQuest. But, you know, three different types of flavors and priorities. I would definitely suggest this one as the better one in, 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 in general, value-wise. But it all depends on your personal tastes. Um, that's just how I see it. So, uh, let's get into, like, you know the recipe for for good potential uh yeah so generally you want a big speaker um that's important that that plays a big difference in uh, a big difference a big role sorry <laughs> a big role in in tweaks generally working so you don't want a cheap speaker, you don't want a small speaker that has to, you know, fill up a whole room. You generally want something that, you know, big, powerful, hefty, has a lot of potential. But you just know that there's more there that you want to zoom in on. And you know that it can deliver because it's a reasonably expensive speaker, you know. Um, so yeah, you, you kind of have to know that it, it, it was a, a reasonably high model rank at the time that it was bought. So it cost a lot of money and you have to kind of hear that it has, it takes a while to kind of develop this sense, but you, you can just hear in some speakers that there's so many gears there, you know, so much potential. And, um, my friend definitely heard that in the um, Verity Fidelio speaker. He he heard that. I wouldn't have chanced it, um, but he heard it, he did it, it worked. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have chanced it. I, I, I would have thought it was a bit of a gamble, but he was right, he was right. And you can do it even more on, on the bigger brother, um, Parsifal, I, I, without a doubt. I also heard that from him. Um, and you kind of 
perhaps you want to try the three different types of cables so that you just do one cable in the middle range listen to it at the store kind of figure out okay where is this going is this the, the right type of cable that i want okay i don't want it like that good another cable you kind of have to figure that out for yourself yes it, it, it is a bit of a gamble but just having him take that cable out of the speaker that can give you some perspective of what cable was used and you'll find out with a lot of speakers that the cable that they use is often a very pathetic compensating type of cable that kind of generalizes the sound so you're lacking a bit of finesse in this and that area and sometimes there is a reason <laughs> for why they did that because you know they recognize the uh, the limitations of the speaker and they don't want it to to reveal stuff that that makes it seem uh, weak inferior uh, not really 100 percent certain so sometimes i think that often what manufacturers will do is they'll try and go away from this more authentic fragile uh, fine type of sound and they'll typically lean towards a sound that is more on the reserved heavy limited uh, area so just know that um so let me just write that down uh, we'll make it a bit heavy limited and and safe that that is what they will um, um, try to do with most uh, cables so just recognize that you know that that is a theme that kind of goes on in a lot of speakers um, they don't want stuff to freak out and to get too much glare too much detail and yeah once in a while that does happen without a doubt but that is the general theme with a lot of um, speaker cables out there uh, heavy limited safe uh, perhaps a bit locked in this and that way kind of giving you a certain angle in the sound instead of just freeing it up and letting you know things react even though it doesn't necessarily sound better um, so just know that so you kind of want to find a cable that's more free natural your kind of thing um, and finding that in, in a version where it's cheap that can be difficult you know i mean in theory this this is just me theorizing you could take a speaker that is a bit muddy and in theory you could buy um Uh, what is it? Speaker, cable, by wire, uh, summer cable, elephant for like $5. I don't know how much it costs. How much does it cost? Like $500 per meter. And you can cut that up and then you have like four strings you could use. In theory, you know, we're theorizing here and th this is stretching the truth a bit, you know. If you have a very muddy speaker and you and you just want something that's more reactive and fresh, in theory, you could solve that problem with a cable like this, in theory. But, I mean, if that's going to solve the problem for you, then you most likely also have a speaker that's really bad. I mean, really bad so more likely um more likely it's going to be something like um an audio note lx um speaker cable for like how much do they cost for like a hundred bucks per meter that's more likely going to do an upgrade on most speakers in the world you know so take that into consideration 
um, between this level here and the one I just mentioned before, you generally don't want to be at those lower levels. You know, this is kind of, you kind of want to stay in this zone and above when you're upgrading cables in a speaker for that to be um, long lasting sound that, you know, where you can reap the rewards throughout the many, many years that you are going to keep that speaker. Um, so a lot of these do it yourself, Tolk Carlson speaker projects like the DTQ WT speakers like this. They can of course get much better if you use something like Cardis cables, Cardis plugs. You can also like use, like I said, the um, the AudioNote LX speaker cable. Um, I would probably do that instead. That's cheaper. And then you know you you could you could be a bit daring and put some AudioNote my shoe on the back. That would make it a bit more naughty and fresh and fine and detail you know you could do that you know um the cardas would be more heavy more reserved more rolled off in sound this other sound this audio note sound would be more fine more revealing but you'll also probably hear some of the weaknesses of the speaker and and the system again you kind of have to evaluate what's better so <clears throat> do it yourself speakers generally most levels um, that you officially buy most times have horrible cables and plugs with only some few exceptions so just know that when you solve problems with warm cables you then lose a lot of the potential um, so I can also imagine with like an old top pro act speaker from the olden days, you could open the detail more up with some proper detail, with some, oh, sorry, proper cable, proper terminals. Um, can also be a good idea to maybe hear, <clears throat> like I said before, the inside cable of the speaker, unlike an RCA cable or a speaker cable, just so you can understand that, ah, okay, that's what this thing is doing to the sound. Um, where do I want to go from there? So, uh, mm, I think I wrote this about a month ago, so I'm just trying to, you know, figure out what I was trying to say with this. But this is just me guessing. But the impression I get from listening to most speakers is that if we create a, uh, a cable rank from uh, 0 to 10, this is what I hear in general what's on the market. Most speakers on the market in the uh, 0 to $10,000 category store price only has a rating of 1 to 3 of cable quality. And um, <clears throat> if they could use a higher quality cable, they would. But, you know, business has to exist. They have to make money. So that's why they don't do that. It makes a lot of sense. I would also do that if I had a speaker company. There's just limitations because of the whole um, way, you know, money has to flow in this world. Um, and I would guess that, you know, a typical 10 to 15K US dollar speaker has a 3 to 4 rating. And, you know, and, and uh, 50K to 500K has the three and a half to five out of 10 rating. And then maybe once in a while, like like a six. And then I just do some comparisons here, you know. Um, the cable that's in my uh, circa $10,000 audio note speaker here, here. I would say that, that that is a cable of a, you know, about a, an 8 out of 10 rating. Where if I had like the SPX model, which is the, the model above that, it would probably be like more like 8.2. And the higher models, so gone, would probably be like 9.5 and 10 out of 10. So... The, these cables here, I mean, they cost as much as, a, you know, half a car 
per meter. So <clears throat> there's a reason why we don't use cables like that, not just because of the price, but they reveal so much detail that everything else in the speaker has to be on a certain level in order to sound good so you can get deep into the sound because if you put a cable that's at a level five out of ten in a speaker where everything else in the speaker is only on a level one it's just most likely going to sound horrible in some kind of a way you know um and this is you know again these, these are just my opinions and how i would rate stuff but um this is just me guessing, but but the best Terralabs cables are probably in the uh, 7.5 to 8.5 um, rating out of 10. And top Condor, perhaps 7.9. And then, you know, Nordist, Odin, 2, around 7 to 8 area. And then um, Yorma cables, the top ones, are probably up to around... 7.5 so i mean you might look at this and think wow um that's not very high standard of, of cables generally no um <clears throat> i mean these are basically the best cables on the market that i know of with like perhaps a handful more of cables that i haven't mentioned in, in the same price class and, and these are just crazy prices so I mean, it's it's just really expensive making a good speaker cable. Um, the Verity Sarastro speaker has Nordist Odin 2 in it um, as one of the few speakers in the world. I don't know other speakers that, that have that cable in them, but um, when you then also listen to other Verity speakers like Lenore, Parsifal, Amadeus, it, it's on the level of around six, six and a half, um, the cable that they use. So th that is why I recommend um, the SPE uh, 19 cable, you know. Um, uh, the, the, this speaker model here uses SPE 19, just so you know. That's, that's a bit of the reason why it's called SPE. So <clears throat> that has a rating of eight out of ten. So, so that is why it, it's going to upgrade a um, a speaker like the Lenore, Parsifal, or Amadeus because it's just just that bit better on every part um, of the detail. But again, a lot more expensive. That's of course why they haven't used it. Um, you can't just put the most expensive cables in a, in a speaker you have to at the end of the day make money on selling speakers and um once i actually saw a job uh, position at a variety um speaker assembly uh, factory i can't remember if it was france or canada or whatever and i looked at you know how much they were earning uh, the guys making these speakers an hour and I mean, I wasn't very impressed. Um, uh, it, it was almost as much as a as, as a you know random dude doing any anything. You know, um, not even teachers get that lower wage an hour. So I was kind of surprised how how low these technicians um, earn on on such a beautiful piece of speaker. But it just goes to show you that. Um, it's tough being a, a speaker manufacturer earning money on speakers. I thought that these guys earned at least, um, you know, fifty dollars uh, an an hour, but it's way, way, way below that. More like um, fifteen dollars uh, an hour is the standard, I would say, of uh, most manufacturers, and the, and and sometimes even lower than that and and even these expensive speaker companies they they also you know a lot of them only earn like 15 bucks an hour you know i was just like shocked to see this you know like what the hell you know 
how is this possible? But, you know, I, I saw that about, I think, a year ago when I was looking for a job. Um, I came across this 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 ad here. So I, I was just I was kind of mind blown there thinking that, wow, one of the most, ex, you know, exclusive speaker manufacturers only has technicians or wh whatever you call those people working at these factories. Um, only working for like 15 bucks an hour uh what what a what a tough job that must be um but um kind of sidestepped a bit on that one um i've written a lot of other stuff you you can you can read here so i don't want to make this video too long but um there there's a lot of stuff to to think about here that you probably have to um read um so so yeah i would say that th this isn't an uncommon uh, practice here that you have a 15k us dollar speaker and you have a cable in it that's probably like three out of ten crossover that's you know four out of ten speaker terminals uh, three out of ten i mean it's 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 very normal that the crossover is the strongest point together with the units in the speaker and then that it's the cable and especially the terminals that are usually the the weaker points you know so generally with with a with a decent speaker you don't want to really consider crossover upgrades i mean potentially you can in some few speakers and if you are one of those rain man technicians that can kind of you know sense all kinds of weird stuff and really are you know tuned into a lot of different components how they sound perhaps you can find something that's a bit better but uh usually it is the speaker cable and um oops speaker cable and the terminals that you need to uh, address in, in in a in a speaker upgrade so um just a lot of information i hope you guys don't get a you know got too overwhelmed with all of this information that i've uh, thrown into this video again you know i'm not a engineer technician so these are just my observations having looked at a lot of other friends that did this i have actually helped uh one friend uh partly assemble a do-it-yourself project but uh, and I have also done some few tweaks on my own do-it-yourself speaker, but at a very low level. So don't ask me about specifics. This is all that I know. Um, but I generally have a really good feeling for stuff in the hi-fi world. And uh, I noticed some patterns. And these patterns that I noticed um, can benefit a lot of people. And you might think that, you know, paying one, two, three thousand dollars or whatever it costs to get your speaker upgraded is like money out of the window. But but I but I'm telling you that from my experience, having heard other people, um, some of my friends have, having paid that amount of money, usually one, two, three, four, five thousand dollars that they paid for getting these upgrades done they they said that it was totally worth it in the end because it just gave them a lot more uh complete detail instead of this flat detail where they got a certain angle on the sound but yeah that that's assuming that you have a pretty decent speaker uh like the ones that i showed you um down here so yeah i hope that helps you guys and uh, like and subscribe and look at all of my videos um yeah have a nice day